I've been saying this about Aaron Rodgers since his long ago, far away Super Bowl. That was 14 seasons ago. 14 seasons ago. Aaron Rodgers is the all-time blame-deflecting finger pointer who's been almost as overprotected by the national media as LeBron has always been. Aaron Rodgers is the LeBron James of the National Football League. No clutch gene. Aaron leads the league in too cool, cool, on and off the field. He dates very cool women. He flicks cool bullets with style and swagger beyond anything we've ever seen from a QB. Again and again, I heard it, ESPN and Fox, transcended thrower of the football. But, I kept saying, lousy leader, no clutch gene. Way back when, I started calling Aaron out on television. He called me out. I kept calling him out, and he kept validating my criticism. Remember, he did lead the Packers to that one Super Bowl with no pressure on him, no expectation on him as a road wild card team that barely survived Michael Vick in Philly, then took the Falcons by surprise and by storm in Atlanta, then barely survived the immortal Caleb Haney subbing for Jay Cutler in Chicago. Aaron had zero TD passes and two interceptions in that NFC Championship game. Packers actually lost the second half 14 to 7, managed to hang on, win 21 to 14, while Jay Cutler pedaled away on the exercise bike with a sprained knee throughout that second half. The Packers did go on and beat the Steelers in that Super Bowl at Jerry World. But I'm serious about this. Troy Polamalu tried to play safety on a pulled hamstring, shell of self. And during that game, while I'm watching that game, a prominent defensive coordinator from another team texted me that it was so hard for Pittsburgh to defend Green Bay's deep speed because Ryan Clark just didn't have the wheels anymore. So congrats, Aaron, your Super Bowl MVP 14 seasons ago. Really? Yeah, as I watched that, remember the Hard Knocks episodes when Aaron first joined the Jets? I kept hearing Jet player after Jet player reverently refer to Aaron Rodgers as the GOAT. The what? The GOAT? You're kidding me. I saw so many preseason predictions this year that had the Jets getting to or even winning the Super Bowl. I said, no, no, no. Jets will miss the playoffs because of the 40-year-old quarterback who will alienate receivers and blow close games. Then this past Monday night, of course, the Jets lost at home to Buffalo. 23-20, to went on a late third and 16 from their 40. Aaron pathetically underthrew him again. Mike Williams, who tried desperately to reverse field and fight back for the football before it was intercepted. Then afterward, in his media interview, Aaron threw Mike Williams under the bus for running the wrong route and ran over him two or three times. Last week, it was the coach's fault, so the coach got fired. Now it's Mike Williams' fault, and he just got replaced by a blast from Aaron's past, Devontae Adams, who used to be the NFL's best receiver. Maybe Aaron and Devontae can recapture some of their old green and gold magic, but Devontae is going on 32 now and doesn't have quite the separation burst he used to. Right now, Garrett Wilson is better than Devontae Adams. Now watch Garrett Wilson start to complain about not getting enough footballs thrown his way. No, no, no. Aaron keeps getting what he wants, but the problem is the blame-deflecting, finger-pointing quarterback is the problem. And he's a far phonier goat than even LeBron James is. Monday night, Aaron Rodgers got outplayed by Josh Allen, 
made that big late third down run to ice the game. I'll admit it, I've never been much of a Josh Allen guy. Going into this season, Josh Allen had the most turnovers in the league since he came into the league. But now, Josh Allen is leading the league in QBR ahead of Joe Burrow and ahead of Jaden Daniels because Josh Allen has thrown 10 touchdown passes to zero interceptions through six games. And because Josh Allen has lost only two fumbles in six games. Man, Josh Allen has had to grow up and clean up his act without Stefan Diggs. And has he ever? Josh Allen now throws mostly to his tight end guy. A campaign for the Dallas Cowboys to draft Dalton Kincaid. Josh does have Shakir who can fly and Keon Coleman, their rookie, who has Mike Williams sort of size at 6'4", 220 pounds. But now the Bills have traded for Amari Cooper who won't exactly change life for Josh Allen the way he initially did way back when for Dak Prescott. Remember that in 2018. So the good news about Amari Cooper, he has low ego. The bad news about Amari Cooper, he has low motor. That's why John Gruden was willing to trade him to Jerry Jones for a first round pick. And that's why in 2019, second year in Dallas, Amari Cooper started quitting on the Dallas Cowboys. He shut it down at the Jets. Remember that? And then Stephon Gilmore made him quit at New England. Then Jason Garrett, then the head coach, yanked Amari in the fourth quarter of a winner-take-all game at Philly because Amari was running half-hearted routes. But can he be a very good route runner in Buffalo? Sure he can. Can he be a happy third or fourth option for Josh Allen? Sure. But all that really matters right now in Buffalo is the Bills have a quarterback, a guy at 28 who's starting to look like the quarterback in the National Football League. 